Hello, and thank you for watching this regional forecast for the Canadian Prairie. I'm Andrew Pritchard, Senior Meteorologist with Nutrient Ag Solutions. Well, temperatures across the region right now, warmest in the east, cooler in the west as we have a storm system making its way through the region. We've got warm air advection leading into this one on the east side. We've got cooler air coming in on the back side. And where we have the clash of those air masses, that's where we have some cloud cover and some thunderstorms ongoing, kind of along the southern border of Saskatchewan and Manitoba, just ahead of that cold front again, several rounds of showers and storms. Uh, across the region. You can see that when we look at the wide picture of the radar here, here's the cool rain coming in on the backside, that kind of stratiform, cloudy, gloomy, gray, rainy conditions. And then in the uh, warm sector here, out in advance there, in front of the cold front, uh, more uh, robust shower and thunderstorm threat. And we can kind of zoom in even a little bit more there, again, on the southern border of Saskatchewan and Manitoba. Again, some strong storms producing probably some hail, uh, making their way through uh, portions of um, southwestern Manitoba again and far southeastern Saskatchewan and as we head into the rest of the afternoon I'm gonna expect to see more scattered storms flaring up off to the east that probably include the Winnipeg area and then points off to the south and east from there during the afternoon and evening we've seen some severe weather over the last several days and we have some severe storms to talk about in the coming days as well these photos were posted to Twitter by uh, at Stuart Milliner one there some hail damage northeast of Calgary again from some of the strong storms in that area over the last couple of days and as we talk about the next several days, let's look at the, uh, the, the high resolution rapid refresh for today. This is gonna show that scattered storm threat across southeastern Manitoba as we head into the late afternoon and out, uh, in the evening hours. This would be about one o'clock uh, noon. At this point, those storms that were on the backside here have fizzled. Those will begin to uh, wane as we head through the later hours this morning. Uh, but heading into the later afternoon hours this afternoon, getting around four or five o'clock, six o'clock this evening, we'll see that front flaring back up with some scattered storms maybe producing some scattered hail, but uh, as we talk about tomorrow and Wednesday, that's when I think we've got a really robust severe weather threat across portions of uh, southern Saskatchewan into southern Manitoba. The reason for that, well, this storm system, this upper level low doesn't really go anywhere uh, over the next couple of days. So we get to this afternoon and evening, you can see the temperature disparity here. We got warm air coming up in advance of that storm system, the cool air uh, trying to feed in right here. As we go ahead and take this into Tuesday though, it's a very similar setup. We're getting into Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, and evening. Look at that. The, we've got kind of things regenerating here such that we've got warm air advection again out in advance. We've got our front here, cooler air trying to come in. And then if we take it all the way into Wednesday, the front moves east maybe 50 to 100 miles. Very similar setup. And as long as we've got this kind of clash of the air masses, we're going to dig deeper here in a minute. But we've got a favorable pattern for these storms across the region. So let's look at tomorrow. Let's look at uh, a snapshot here. Tomorrow, this will be Tuesday, June 16th, right around 7 p.m. The top left here, we're looking at instability. This is the fuel for our thunderstorms. It's kind of a combination of the, the heat and humidity in the lower levels, uh, factoring in also the cooler temperatures aloft with our, our trough, our, our area of low pressure in the upper levels of the jet stream. So as we're looking at instability, very high instability levels here, kind of along and south of that warm front across southeastern Saskatchewan into southern Manitoba. Uh, if we start talking about 1,500 to 2,000 joules per kilogram of Cape, that's plenty for strong thunderstorms. You start seeing those red, purple, and white colors where we're getting into the 3,000, 4,000 level. That is an explosive environment that's ready to go. Let's take a look at the surface winds down below that. We've got south, southeasterly surface winds kind of curving, uh, curling in to that area of low pressure. You see the tight circulation right there. Uh, that area of low pressure, we'll go ahead and draw it in right here. You've got your warm front, uh, the cold front coming down south from there. And then again, here is your warm and unstable air mass. So we've got strong surface flow along with that unstable air mass. Let's look at just a little bit above our heads, 850 millibars. This is our low level jet. These are those low level winds kind of screaming just above our head. Sometimes you wake up, you see those clouds just racing from south to north. Well, that's what we've got here. A strong low level jet kind of wrapping in around that area of low pressure as well. And then let's look a little bit further upstairs, right in the mid levels of our atmosphere. Uh, we've got very strong winds in the, uh, the mid levels of the jet stream coming in out of the southwest. So let's kind of look at it all together. We've got instability nearly off the charts in this region. We've got surface winds coming in from the south let's go ahead and draw this in black out of the south southeast to out of the east southeast at the surface the low level jet is cranking we've got those strong low level winds uh, just above our head a few thousand feet above our head and then on top of all of that we've got flow coming out of the southwest so you've got turning you got your southeast winds at the low levels uh, you got your strong low, low level jet over the top of that 
And then even higher, you've got your strong jet stream winds coming out of the southwest. So you've got turning within the atmosphere. You've got plenty of lift to get that turning to be lifted into the vertical. And when that happens, you end up with rotating thunderstorms. There is your meteorology 101. But I'm telling you, you know, I have been uh, chasing storms for about the last two decades of my life, just trying to find tornadoes. So uh, when something like this jumps off the page at me, uh, you know, if I'm out there looking for tornadoes, I'm headed to southeast Saskatchewan tomorrow or for that chance for some uh, supercell thunderstorms producing large hail damaging winds and again a few tornadoes possible. Uh, really, at this point, I'd be targeting maybe the Regina area. And then as we look at Monday, we get basically the same thing. I'm just showing the instability and the mid-level winds here, but you can kind of imagine we've got those strong winds again coming out of the south, southeast uh, at the low levels, the very strong winds aloft to help kind of uh, not only take those to severe levels, but help give us a little added lift and then, you know, plenty of instability across this region. Once again, in the warm sector, this would be across maybe the southeast quarter of Manitoba tomorrow. So the Winnipeg area going to be under the gun on uh, this is Wednesday. I'm sorry. So uh, Wednesday that that threat shifts off to the uh, to the east just a bit across uh, primarily southern Manitoba. Just to kind of uh, reaffirm this, this is our thunderstorm index here at Nutrien, something I've worked on over the last couple of years. It looks to, you know, kind of uh, qualify our environment here. How volatile is that environment? Should a thunderstorm develop within it? And again, as we look at things, this is Tuesday at 7 p.m. tomorrow. Really nearly jumping off the chart here. Values between 8 and 9 uh, across the region. And as we look at uh, uh, Wednesday, 4 p.m. on Wednesday again, uh, across kind of uh, southern and southeastern Saskatchewan. Once again, very high levels here. So uh, everything jumping off the page here as we talk about Tuesday evening, Wednesday evening for some severe weather, including the potential for very large hail, damaging winds, and a few tornadoes from southeastern Saskatchewan across southern Manitoba. Uh, if you capture anything, certainly, you know, don't take my word for it and go out here and look for the severe weather. I don't want anyone putting themselves into, uh, you know, danger, but uh, if you have some severe weather occur over your fields, you have some damage, you capture a cool, uh, you know, thunderstorm front coming in, um, I eat that stuff up. Go ahead and shoot it to me through email uh, or on Twitter. You go reach me at andrew.pritchard at nutrient.com. You can find me on Twitter, social media at SkyDrama. I'd be happy to take a look at those, maybe share some of them in the video, but it helps me get a better understanding of ground truth in that area. I can only do so much forecasting from uh, right about here. Uh, I want to know what's going on on the ground there. So send me your imagery. Let me know what you're seeing uh, over there in portions of the prairie. So let's go ahead now. We've looked at the ingredients. Let's look at what is happening with the precipitation forecast over the next several days. Again, we'll see those thunderstorms dying out across uh, southwestern portions of uh, Manitoba, Manitoba, getting into uh, central portions of Manitoba this morning. Watching for those thunderstorms scattered in nature to flare back up across far southeastern Manitoba as we head through the afternoon and evening hours with cooler rain uh, showers continuing at times back towards the west. Now, as we head into the afternoon tomorrow, we talked about the volatile environment. We'll expect to see those scattered thunderstorms erupting during the afternoon and evening hours. Uh, the most severe weather tomorrow probably going to be across southeastern Saskatchewan. Again, uh, the, the Regina area, Yorkton, uh, Weyburn, Moose Jaw, those areas, all places that I'm concerned about for severe storms tomorrow. We'll watch those continue into the overnight before things kind of quiet down and flare back up on Wednesday just off to the east. Again, that Wednesday severe weather threat going to be greatest across southern Manitoba uh, and probably bullseye here across southeastern Manitoba right in the Winnipeg area as we head into Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, and Wednesday night. And again, on the backside here, as the storm system slowly does move off to the east, we'll see that cool rain, uh, that gloomy rain continuing on the backside, pulling out of here as we get into the end of the week. So total precipitation, again, just raw model output. But understanding the pattern here, the heaviest precipitation going to be found in a corridor here from southwestern Saskatchewan into central Manitoba. That's where we could see anywhere from 40 to 60 millimeters of pre uh, precipitation, locally higher amounts possible. And then as you head off to the south from there, uh, this is the area where we're most concerned about the severe weather threat. Uh, but the threat could be more scattered in nature. So uh, those heavy rainfall uh, totals are going to be more isolated. It's going to be where some of those heavier thunderstorms track uh, with others being left kind of out to dry. Uh, over the next couple of days. Now this pattern, where are we headed as we head deeper into the week? This is the problem trough right here, this one that can, uh, you can see kind of the broader trough, but within that you've got these short waves and that is what is causing the uh, the periodic kind of redevelopment of the, the environment here for uh, being conducive for severe storms, kind of the reloading of that environment. 
Uh, so again, today we've got those strong jet stream winds, that streak coming through central uh, and southern Saskatchewan. That's what helped kind of kick off the thunderstorms this morning across southeastern Saskatchewan into southwestern Manitoba. As we take this into the day tomorrow, again, you just watch this trough continuing to rotate through the region. Those strong upper level jet stream winds uh, over the top of the, uh, the eastern portions of the prairie. Finally, as we get into the later part of the week, though, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, this thing's starting to come more of a kind of a cutoff low as it begins to die out. This is going to bring a cooler air mass into the region, but it's going to kind of shut down the heavier precipitation threat as we head into the deeper part of the week into the weekend. We can look at that here, the precipitation forecast from the European model. We've really hammered uh, uh, the last or the next couple of days pretty in depth uh, with our higher resolution models. But just quickly passing through, here's Tuesday uh, afternoon and evening. Getting into uh, Wednesday, this is when we would see that severe weather threat now across uh, southern Manitoba, getting into southeastern Manitoba with cool rain kind of wrapping around on the north side and the back side of this area of low pressure begins to decay. As we head into Thursday, uh, the severe weather threat should be uh, east of the prairie now, maybe right along the uh, uh, Manitoba-Ontario border, the chance for th some thunderstorms, but by and large, it's just cool rain across uh, portions of the prairie as we head deeper into the week Thursday into Friday, still watching this cutoff low, just kind of try and spin away. This is going to be really kind of a, a dreary end to the week, especially across Saskatchewan and Manitoba. Not talking about much in the way of heavy precipitation, but just daily uh, as we head into Thursday and Friday, at least looking at these gloomy, cool, and, and kind of, uh, you know, maybe drizzly conditions. We're all the way into Saturday now, still looking at the chance for some of these showers flaring up across southern Manitoba, drying out back toward the east. It'll be dry as we get into Saturday across uh, the prairie here in Alberta and Saskatchewan, and then dry continuing deeper into the wind, uh, weekend, Sunday, Monday, and then into next week. So temperatures, those are again going to be progressive in nature. We're warmer in the east right now, cooler in the west. That cooler air going to be overspreading the entire prairie as we get into the last part of the weekend here, getting into uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Cooler temperatures overspreading the entire prairie. And then let's go ahead and take this a little bit deeper into next week because we'll start to watch a ridge build in. Heat first starting in the west, beginning to push back from west to east across the prairie with temperatures probably returning to warmer than average conditions as we get into the June 22nd, 23rd, and 24th time frame early to mid next week. A look at those temperatures then in some select cities. Calgary, again, cooling off on the backside of this trough. The coolest day probably going to be Thursday this week before we start to warm up into the weekend. Similar look here in Edmonton. And Regina, again, cooler air slowly making its way in. 25 degrees for the high tomorrow, though, with that severe weather threat. Cooling off on the backside here down to 15 on Friday. Saskatoon, again, you're going to have that severe weather threat tomorrow, maybe just a little bit north of the more robust tornado threat, uh, but still a high of 20 tomorrow, 12 for the high on Thursday, climbing back up into the mid-20s as we get into the back half of the weekend and early next week. And then in Winnipeg, you're holding out of that warmer air mass a few days longer and then keeping that threat for some strong storms in the forecast. Late Tuesday, probably highest uh, as we talk about the severe weather threat in the Manitoba area, uh, or I'm sorry, the Winnipeg area in southern Manitoba, going to be highest on Wednesday. Cooling off as we head into the last half of the week into the weekend, warming back up as we get into early next week.